Sometimes the project has more than one part. This particular project comes from a download which has two different items together. First is a turkey, a turkey centerpiece. Thanksgiving is coming. And the second is a pumpkin shaped napkin holder. Pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving as well. I'll show you how to make both of these in today's video. I watch other woodworkers on the YouTube channel. Uh, you should too. Uh, and the other day I ran into someone I hadn't seen before and that was a woman named Winnie Standish and her YouTube channel is Standish Wood Story. And the particular project she was making uh, that, that caught my attention was this one for Thanksgiving table decor. There's a turkey and a pumpkin napkin holder. She did them on a bandsaw. Um, I'm going to do them on the scroll saw. So hang around and we'll get two projects done today. I'm going to start with the turkey which has two pieces, the body and the tail. Winnie suggested making the turkey from three-quarter to one-inch thick material. I have plenty of four-quarter red oak on hand and I think the turkey will look good in that material. The surfaces were still a little rough, so I ran the board through the thickness planer and brought the 13 16 material down to three quarters. The piece I'm using for the turkey is about eight and a half inches wide by 10 inches long. There are a number of methods for attaching patterns to wood, and I'll leave a link to my video on the subject on the screen and in the description. My favorite method is to use scroll saw tape. It's a double-sided tape that comes in a roll. You roll it onto the wood, then trim it to size. Then you remove the backing and place the tape on top of it. The tape holds the pattern firmly to the wood while you're cutting, but it peels off easily when you're done without leaving any sticky residue. I'll leave a link to my source for the scroll saw tape in the description. To determine which way to mount the blade, I hold it in my right hand and run the blade lightly across the thumb on my left hand. The blade will catch more strongly in one direction than the other. That indicates more of the teeth are facing in that direction, and that it's the side you want to face down because you want the blade to do most of its cutting in the down direction. The upcut exists to leave a splinter-free bottom on the workpiece. This is 3 quarter inch thick material, and I decided to go with a number 9 Pegasus Modified Geometry Blade because the pattern is simple and a number 9 blade will cut faster than a number 7. My tendency is to go with the larger size most of the time when the choice borders between two sizes. Experience will show you whether going to the larger or smaller size works best for you. My rule of thumb is only a suggestion. For a full discussion of blade size choices, I left a link to my video on the subject on the screen and in the description. When I attached the pattern to the wood, I ensured the bottom of the turkey's feet aligned with the edge of the board. That way I knew the bottom would be flat. This is a good place to start cutting, so that's what I did. The turkey shape is relatively simple, so all I had to do was follow the line and let the blade do the work. Don't try to speed things up by putting more pressure on the blade. All that will do is cause the blade to flex so you don't get a 90 degree cut, or it can cause the blade to overheat and start burning the wood. A third possibility is that too much pressure can cause the blade to break. When I got to the lower part of the turkey's beak, I kept cutting past it until the blade went off the side of the board. This accomplished two things. First, it allowed easy removal of the waste piece. Second, it allowed me to make the angled cut for the upper part of the beak from the outside edge rather than have to try to make a very sharp angle to get a point on the beak. From the back of the turkey's neck, I cut down to that curve, which was easy to make even with a number 9 blade. The line went back up, then started across. The best way to handle the slot for the feathers will be to go past it and come back to it later, so that's what I did. The line soon went vertical for the turkey's tail feathers, and the next part is going to take some skill. The way to make these turnarounds at the bottom of each semicircle is to cut right up to the point, then back off pressure on the blade slightly so it is no longer cutting. Then you slowly pivot the workpiece until it's facing in the new direction you want to cut and feed it into the blade once again. By doing it this way, you should have a nice sharp point at the turn. I kept repeating this procedure all the way around the tail feather portion of the turkey. If you're new to scroll sawing and find this procedure difficult, you could instead cut rounded edges at the bottom of each of the semicircles. 
it will look just as good. But if you want to progress at this craft, making sharp interior points like this is a skill you will need to develop. Now I can come back and cut the slot for the tail feather piece. The pattern has two sets of lines so that you can choose the set that corresponds to the thickness of the wood you are using. One set of lines is one inch apart and the other is three quarters wide. I know that my wood is exactly 0.75 inches thick, so I'll cut along the lines three quarters of an inch apart. I started on the right side and cut until the tip of the blade was at the end of the vertical line. Then I backed the blade out and made the cut on the left side, but this time I didn't back the blade out. Instead, when I reached the end of that line, I backed off pressure on the blade slightly, swiveled the workpiece 90 degrees, and then started cutting the horizontal line for the bottom of the slot. When I reached the other side, I could easily slide the waste piece out of the way. That little moment of truth when you do the test fit and it's perfect the first time is always satisfying. Sometimes it's more like measure twice, cut once, then force it to fit with a mallet. Careful work pays off the first time. I peeled off the pattern so that you can see how easily the scroll saw tape peels off when you're done cutting, and so you can get a first peek at what the turkey is going to look like. This time I decided to cut the slot first. Once again the pattern had both sizes clearly marked and I made the cuts for the three quarter slot. I made the cut on the left, backed the blade out to the edge, then made the cut on the right. I followed the same procedure, backing up slightly on the blade, just enough so it wasn't cutting, rotated the workpiece, then cut the horizontal line to complete the slot. It was time for another test fit. <laughs> so much for accuracy. This illustrates how just a tiny fraction of an inch makes the difference between a good fit and no fit. I'll need to go back and make this slot an itsy bitsy bit wider. I started to make a cut to widen the slot, but then thought better of it. Rather than make the correction freehand, I needed to use a pencil and a ruler to draw a new cut line that wouldn't be much further away than the width of the scroll saw blade. I decided to make the outside cut for the feathers first, and then I could come back and fix the fit problem. This cut was just like the one for the turkey's body with the feathers at the rear. I cut along each curve until reaching an intersection, backed off slightly on the blade, rotated the workpiece, then started cutting again. It's a matter of doing this repeatedly until the cut is complete. I added a new line, and as I mentioned before, it wasn't much further away from the original cut lines than the thickness of the scroll saw blade. It didn't matter which side I made the correction on. Since the slice I was removing was so thin, it took great control to make the cut. I completed the cut at the bottom, and then I was ready for, hopefully, the last test fit. I'm cutting the pumpkin from poplar because I want to paint it orange and poplar takes paint nicely. This cut is very easy and even a novice should have no trouble with it. It's just a matter of following the line and letting the blade do the work. I'll need to cut two of these, one for each side of the napkin holder. Then I'll need a rectangular piece for the spacer. I should easily be able to find a scrap left over from some other project to make that. The glue ups for these two projects are both straightforward. I used a small bottle to apply white glue to the slots for the turkey parts, and then I used my fingertip to spread the glue around. Looking back, a glue brush would have helped me do a better job spreading the glue evenly inside those slots. I had no idea on how to clamp the two pieces, so I just set them aside and let gravity do the work. <laughs> Four years of college and seven years of postgraduate study evidently didn't do much in helping me develop common sense. Once again, I used the glue bottle to add a bead of glue to each side of the spacer. As I went to add some glue to the bottom of one of the pumpkins, I noticed a small rough spot, so I tidied it up with a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. Then I added a bead of glue to the other pumpkin and placed the spacer in between them. It was easy to decide how to hold these pieces together while the glue dried. F clamps. One on each side would give sufficient pressure to hold the three parts together. Once the glue is dry, I'll take both projects to my finishing room. I'll use a spray polyurethane on the turkey and orange spray paint on the napkin holder.
I think this is the first time I've made two different but related items in the same video. I finished the turkey with spray polyurethane and the napkin holder with orange spray paint just as I had planned. One of the things I noticed about the pumpkin was that the paint didn't totally cover the grain of the wood. I liked that effect, so I didn't put on another coat of paint to cover it up. I liked the grain showing through. I'd like to thank Winnie Standish for the plans and permission to use them for this video. She made these two items, but using a bandsaw rather than a scroll saw. Her YouTube channel is Standish Wood Story, and I'll leave a link to her video on the, this project in the description. The plans for the turkey centerpiece and the pumpkin napkin holder are available through that link. As always, I appreciate and will respond to any comments you have on this video. See, please subscribe to this channel and Winnie's after you check it out if you haven't already done so. And since I know you haven't seen enough woodworking content yet today, check out the screen for suggestions on what to watch next.